Hello everybody, this is Leslie and welcome to part two of our Christmas in July two-dimensional piece that I'm doing as my design team project for Dash of Dave. So basically in what I'm doing right here is I have a bunch of bobbles from Tim Holtz. The bubbles which are completely clear and then I have ones that are a pearl, we'll say pearlescent. And I have four little cups that I put to the side and I'm basically picking out the smallest little pieces that I could find and trying to, you know, separate them based on, I'm gonna be doing them, in, of course, in different colors so that they can go on the Christmas tree as Christmas ornaments. So thank you everybody who stopped by on the first video. And real quick, I did want to say that this week, uh, Dave is going to be doing 25% off in his shop. So all of his digital papers are 25% off for his birthday. So make sure you head over there and get them while they're on sale because as you heard from my previous video, I speak nothing but highly of Dave's papers. So here I'm taking the colors. Um, I took like a, a pinkish, reddish color, a blue, a green, and I think that was it. Um, and basically what I do is I just put it in those little cups and I have these little sticks that uh, actually came with the inks when I purchase them and I am just making sure that they're fully covered and then I'm gonna just let them sit in the cups so that they actually adhere to the uh, little baubles. And it doesn't really take long. I would say maybe just a couple of minutes, not even maybe, it's definitely less than five. but I just make sure that I mix them around just so because I want to make sure that I get them all covered. I don't want to have spots. Now that is a pearl additive that I added to it. I probably didn't need to, but I said, you know what, I'm just, I have it. I'm, I'm going to just add it. But they actually came out pretty good. And I did learn this from um, Tim himself when he was doing his lives. And most of these projects, like this project that I'm doing here. Now, I've learned from when the makers are making their projects. This is how I've kind of learned from, from them. So I took the lamppost and added a little bit of ink to the actual wreath. And here I'm taking the purple ones out of the container and I am just rubbing them on the paper towel just to make sure that they're dry. And then I have a piece of paper off to the side to remove the ink because needless to say, I will use that somewhere along the line. And basically I just do that for every single one that I did color. So I just put them on the paper towel to let them dry. And they, they didn't stick to the paper towel. And they were very easy to use. I mean, I wouldn't want to be touching it with my hands because, I mean, unless I was wearing gloves, because the ink would definitely stain your fingers. So you can kind of see off to the side the colors that I'm using. So it's very pastel. Mm -hmm. 
And then here I am adding the mahogany color. I saw that I needed to add on a, another cube to one of the shelves. So I'm just using my hot glue gun and adding another cube on. And then I'll be painting it in the, um, I think it's aged mahogany. And again, that paint does not take long to dry either. One, two, three, that paint dries. Probably within maybe 10, 15 minutes, it's completely dried. And again, I'm taking that snowflake paste. And now I'm actually going to be adding some of that to the lamp post. So I'm put, gonna actually put um, like on the top, any place where you know that snow would actually settle onto an, an object and it would hang on after like a heavy snowfall. Now this takes a little while to dry. Um, it, I would say give it at least 24 hours to completely dry through if you especially if you put a heavy coat of it onto an item mine probably dried within maybe to the touch I'd probably say within an hour hour and a half at the most I didn't put a heavy amount of it on the pieces so it really didn't take too, too long. And these are the candy pieces and I'm just rolling them around in my fingers in the snow only because I want to get that crystallized look to them like they're frosted. Now, unfortunately, I do not show everything that I did for the actual piece. Um, otherwise, we would be here for multiple, <laughs> for for quite uh, quite a few uh, episodes. So, and now I'm just taking the snow and I am putting it over the white tree that I have. I do not remember. I don't think that was a Tim Holtz tree. I think I actually got that at the Dollar Tree. And I'm just putting it around and just letting it grasp onto the edges. I don't want a lot of it on there, but I, I want it to look like you know, after it snows and you see on the, the branches, you see certain areas where there's more snow than others. And that's the effect I was looking for. And then I do put snow on the base of the tree because I want to kind of cover up that plastic piece that's on the bottom. And here is the lantern from Tim Holtz. 
and I do the same thing. I take the snowflake paste and build up layers on it to look like fallen snow has collected onto the actual lantern itself. Now I did not change the color of the lantern. I was going to, but then I saw that I did not have the embossing. Um, I have the powders, but I didn't have the stuff that I needed to put on, on it for it to stick, so. So as you can see, I have the little green tree is already attached. And now I'm bringing out those little baubles and just putting them off to the side just so that I have them ready for me when I put the uh, other pieces and stuff together. Oh, actually, I guess we're doing the tree, the little tree. I thought I had done that before. So basically, I'm just putting the baubles onto the little Christmas tree. And you see the um, candy and the candy pieces that kind of look like um, fence posts and light, light, well not, we'll say light posts because I stuck little uh, baubles on the tops to make them kind of look like, um, I don't know if anybody remembers what barber poles look like, but kind of like a barber pole. I wish I would have been able to get smaller little beads, but this is what I had, so this is what I used. So now I'm putting the extension piece onto the second shelf. And I'm just trying to figure out where it's gonna go. So I think what I'm doing here is I'm adding on the extra piece that I needed to add on to it to make it a little bit longer. I apologize when I, I'm doing this on my phone with iMovie and the recording box is pretty much covering most of the screen. So <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to see the bottom of the screen. Hence the reason why I don't like doing voiceovers. But there's no way I would have been able to talk through this whole thing. Not without me editing a good majority of this out. So now I decided that I was going to take the aged mahogany and I was going to paint all of the shelves. So that's what I'm currently doing. I just liked the darker look of the aged mahogany. Not that there was anything wrong with the way the first set looked. It was just lighter than what I had wanted. I probably could have put multiple layers of the 
I think it was the bronze mica. But um, I really don't want to waste that mica. So I figured it would be just better for me to just paint it. So now I think we're trying to figure out where to attach it. Yes, and I did. I added, I added another section on because I needed it a little bit wider for me be, to be able to fit both the uh, the lantern and the Christmas tree. And again, I just used hot glue. So now we're going to start decorating the white Christmas tree with its little ornaments. And I just staggered the colors. I just didn't want all the colors in the same spot. So I did my best to stagger the colors around on the Christmas tree. and you really don't need much glue. So I really didn't use a whole lot of glue. You do have to work quick though because the, the glue will set really quick. So I figured I had enough so I put the little ones I had left to the side and those are the ones that I use on the bottom. So now I took the apothecary jars. Now the apothecary jars, I had already um, hot glued them together. Um, I used both um, hot glue Oh, and I can't think of the other name. And I don't think I have it out here. It's that glossy um, glue, which people use it as glue. And to me, it's too expensive to use as glue. But for this, I actually did use glossy accents. That's what it's called. I did uh, use it for this only because I kind of wanted that glossy type of accent on the glass. So that I didn't show you because that was very tedious and it took a long time to do. But basically what I did was on the glass pieces, I glued the cork tops on and I just, some of them were skewed to the side. And um, then I rolled it in mica flakes and I let that dry and I heated it to the actual glass so that it kind of would adhere to the glass and um, just rubbed it around with some glitter from Tim Holtz. I think it was rock candy. And this, so they kind of looked frosted. Unfortunately, the holes in these bottles that I got from the Dollar Tree, I couldn't put anything in them. They were too small. So if I think you're looking to put stuff into them, I would go with Tim Holtz's. I mean, yes, it was cheaper for me to buy these at the Dollar Tree, but 
again I couldn't put anything in it I didn't want to put glitter or anything like that in there so I'll tell you these little cubes <laughs> I do put the link in the description down below so if you're looking these were very very handy I will make sure I always have some of these on hand because they really do come in handy. Oh, I think this is for the bottom shelf. This is when I decided I wanted to add a, another shelf to the actual bottom of the piece first I made an extension out from the one shelf that I already had there only because if I used it it was gonna bump up against the shelf above so I wanted to extend it out a little so I had a little bit of room so that's what I was doing here So I'm just trying to place things to make sure that I have enough room before I go sticking anything down. And here I am taking a little piece of scrap fabric that I have and it is a green and cream type striped cloth cutting them into tiny little strips because those strips I am going to tie around each one of well not tie but I end up gluing them around the top parts of all the bottles the apothecary bottles I wanted it big enough to be seen, but I also didn't want it to take up the whole entire bottle. So I tried to make sure that they were as thin as possible. So basically all I do is I put a little drop of the hot glue in the front of the bottle. And then I just wrap around the little piece of fabric to join in the front. And I do pull it tight enough so that you have the one end go to the left and you have the one end go to the right. So it looks like it was tied. Now, I had found this bow that I had, and I said, you know what, I'm going to use this on the top. So that's why I put it off to the side. So now I'm looking through all of my Tim Holtz pieces, my boxes of Tim Holtz stuff that I have, because I'm looking for those little um, apothecary jar styled labels. But I needed to make sure that they were the right size. So I'm scouring through the two boxes that I have of course, looking for the smallest ones I have that's going to fit perfectly. And again, I just took my hot glue and that's how I stuck them on. 
And then in the layers collection from Tim Holtz, they had, um, he had stars. So they're like chipboard. I took one of those because that's what I put on the top of the white Christmas tree. And here I'm just adding on those labels onto those frosted apothecary jars. And here I'm sticking on some of those fabric pieces around the tops of the jars. Not all that exciting. I did like the way that it looked though. It looked definitely better with having that on in, instead of them just being plain. Especially because I couldn't put anything on the inside of the jars, which I was kind of hoping that I was gonna be able to put like the smallest little bobbles or bubbles in there, but I couldn't. Now, I didn't cut a lot of this out only because I know sometimes people say, oh, I wish you would have, you know, kept all that in because it, the more that you do, I kind of get to see more of how you actually did it. So when it came to doing this process, I, I actually left a majority of the, of the bottles in. So I was trying to see if that star was going to be too big for the little green tree, but it was. 
So that's why I only ended up using it on the uh, white tree in the end. Alright, so I'm going to have to do some adjustments because I'll show you when I get to the back of this, but as you can see, I've pretty much completed the project. There's just a couple of things that need to be done, but I really want to get this video out to you guys um, because it's going to probably take me a little while to try to figure out how to stabilize the back of it so it does stand up on its own. Um, but as you can see, what I did was I do not have it lit, but you can see that I have little apothecary jars. I have the little candies. These were the um, beads, uh, either the bubbles or the pearlescent type beads that you saw me dyeing with the Tim Holtz Ranger inks. I think they're just by, by Ranger. Um, and that's also too what I have in stuff on the Christmas tree. So all of those beads are ones that I dyed with the Ranger inks. I did put a bow up on top and I did add a little bit of, this is what I used for the snow and it's called Snowflake Paste and it's by Finnebar. And I used quite a bit of this. I bought this last season so I'm going to assume that it is still probably available to purchase. I think I got it in Michaels. And what I did was I had a lamp that I added snow and stuff to. All right, so here, like I said, you see the little candy pieces. And I have, again, I put little baubles and stuff that they fell off the tree. This is the Finnebar Snow. And then these are the icicles from Tim Holtz and I just added some of the snow onto it. And this again was from Tim Holtz. This was the Tim Holtz Lantern. And again, I added snow and stuff to it. And I did add a little bit of lace here to look like it was a lace type of cloth. So you can kind of see that. And we'll get in so you could see the lamp post. And then here is the other Christmas tree. This one is much smaller. And I have like a one of those baubles here. It's a bigger one. And then I put, I attached a bell, one of Tim Holtz's bells. And these are those candy canes. And I just added a, one of those baubles on the top and added snow. And again, those are one of the candy sticks again. And then see how I said about the butterfly showing perfectly? You can see that perfectly. Now this is the stone. And what I had to do was I had to build a base of this stuff up here for me to stabilize it and then use a lot of um, hot glue for me to be able to make it so that it looked level. Otherwise it was kind of crooked. It was kind of leaning forward. Then down here on the bottom, I have uh, another apothecary jar and as you could see in the apothecary jars I took some uh, fabric and ripped it and made little uh, bows and tassels for each one of the jars then these are the Tim Holtz labels from one of I can't remember which one but he has a bunch of the really little labels for those apothecary jars that he has then again, this was from Tim Holtz's Christmas. And again, I have this one that says little, it says Merry Christmas, has the little dog. And then here, I'm gonna see if you can kinda see, I built out, let's see if I can get you to see. I built this out by just one of those blocks. So I brought it out a little further so that 
there was enough clearance for the actual um, lamp post itself. So again, I brought it out by one cube. And here I have compliments of the season. This is just paper, but I backed it on to the front of the block. And then over here, again on the bottom, we have more apothecary jars. We have some larger ones, and then we have the littler ones. So this one has the largest jar I had, the second largest, and then the smallest one. And again, I have the icicles down on the bottom. I have, ice, I have one icicle. I broke off an icicle on one of these and I just stuck it over here. I said, ooh, that works perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light it now I have, and I'll show it to you once I get to the back here. Okay, here we go. And what I did was I just wound the wires around as best I could. I tried to not make make it be that you really could see the wires. If I, there's just some places where you didn't have much choice. I tried to put snow on a good majority of it. But as you can see, I did put one of the bulbs, the red bulb in the actual lantern. So the lantern does light. So it gives a nice glow. Come out here. Now, I'm gonna show you real quick. I'm gonna put this back up on its stand. All right, so we're gonna spin this around here. So what I did was I built this out. I used all of these square tile blocks again to build it out because I wanted to make sure that this bell keeps falling off. I gotta figure out a way of, I may have to use a different glue um, for my mother-in-law to be able to get into where you can kind of see this is hard because like I said, there's hardly any light in here. So here is one of them. So I have the, the, the light piece here. And then on the other side, hopefully you should be able to see this one a little bit better. This one is up towards the top. This one is like right here. Sorry guys, I told you lighting is a, is a misery for me. There you go. So I have it glued on here so you can actually get to put them on and off really, really easily. Now, what I did, I'm gonna shut these lights here. So now what I did was I glued it to the actual base itself. Now I went to Dollar Tree and I got a picture frame. It had been holding, needless to say, it snapped because they're so thin. I mean, they're not made very well. So I had it where it was standing like this. Somehow, some way, I have got to figure out how I can get this to be stable. I need some. I need something like a piece of wood. Um, I had thought about putting these cubes down on the bottom because it would kind of make it somewhat straight but I think it's still gonna fall over. I did kind of pull this back a little bit so it did come out from in here. Cause see how it's just all, well, you're not gonna be able to see it. I'm sorry guys. Lighting, it is, it is a problem. All right, so I did just do glue, hot glue. But if you can tell what I did do was I ended up covering all of the um, mica stain that I did. So that was pretty much a waste of time. I took one of Dave's digitals from Impasto and I took one that had the colors from this lace and I backed that onto the actual piece, the book uh, cover itself. And then again, I did the same thing 
on this side on the actual frame backing and then I just brought it around because it was a little bit larger so I just glued it to here and then I took ribbon and I just bordered the edges and around the paper here so this is what I have to work with this is going to be painted the to show you hopefully here you would think I was shooting this at night I'm not it's early morning but this is the aged mahogany distress paint and that's what I basically used for the um, pieces for the shelves so I will be painting that whole part I'm only gonna do the top I'm not doing the underside so this does have a place to hang, but because the facility that she's in, I want it to stand up so she can put it up on her um, table off to the side as of right now. So if anybody has any ideas, because as you could see, see how you have this space here? If I can get something like this, but sturdy enough, and that I have a bracket. So somehow I'm gonna have to probably get some kind of metal bracket. I was thinking about, I don't want this to fall. I don't think this would work though. Something like this. <laughs> but still, I don't know if this would be sturdy enough for it to hold, you know? And then it's not gonna be, I really have to think this out. I may actually see if maybe my husband John can kinda give me some guidance too. But, um, so here she is. <laughs> So this is the completed piece. Like I said, I just have to figure out how I can get this stabilized for it to be a standing piece, more so than to be on the on the wall. Because needless to say, um, I pretty much now made this so that it would be able to be displayed standing. So um, if anybody has any ideas, please let me know down below in, in the comment section. I'd really appreciate it if you have any ideas or any help that you could give me. I really want to get this out to her this month. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, this was something very different for me. I, I, I've never really made anything like this where it lights up and stuff like this. So, you know, considering this was my first attempt, I think I did pretty well. I do like the fact that Dave's papers do show up fairly well on the back, which is what I really wanted because I wanted the whole July look to be in the background and then have the Christmas part in the front. But like I said, I love how the butterfly just stands out right here. I think it, it really pops right there so but thank you again for everybody who has subscribed and has left comments I truly appreciate it it does help for my YouTube videos to get out there and thank you for your patience on the voiceover because this again is not something I normally do but I knew this was going to be an endeavor that was going to take a while to do um, so Thank you all for your patience. And again, head over to Dave's shop. He is doing a, I think he said it's 25% off sale for his birthday week. And I will put all of the information down in the description box for you, but he is having a sale. So if you can, this is the time you want to get these kits because I'm and I'm being very honest, it's not because I am on his design team. I wanted to be on his design team because I believed in his products. I really enjoy his papers. 
So that was the reason why I wanted to be on his design team. I had offered in the very beginning, if he had decided to have something like that, that I would be more than happy to, you know, help him out because I really do love the artwork that he creates. So, and so, like I said, go over and take advantage of his sale and let me see if I can get this uploaded today for you guys. So take care, everybody, and we'll see you real soon. Bye.